Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Fresh Fire Friday. So glad uh, to have you amongst us, to be with us today um, for this Friday morning. Pray that your Friday morning is starting off with just uh, the greatest and most terrific news you've ever heard, and that your day is going to get uh, so much better as you go along. Good morning to your wife. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Kawana. Like and share the video. Share and like the video. Amen. Let me do the... Let me do the same here. Let me like and share. Good morning, Mary, Minister Miriam. I got I got information. I'm I'm gonna text you sometime uh, before the weekend is over. Uh, so uh, so I'll I'll text you with some information about the uh, about the conference. Some things that um, that we've had to move around and change already. Uh, so I'll be texting you later on uh, this weekend. Good morning, Taylor. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Like and share the video. I'm going to give y'all just a few minutes to uh, to get on in here, and then we're going to get started. Amen. I am, I am, I'm excited about this lesson that God has given us, and so uh, we're going to go over a few things that we went over, uh, went over Wednesday, but then I want to add this other part to it. Amen. Let me sip my tea here while we're getting ready. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> All right, let me let me uh, do this over here, and then we're gonna get going. Uh, pray that God has really, 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 and truly been blessing you, uh, because God is is truly good to His children. Um, he is He has been good to me, and I pray that He has been good to you. Amen. Amen. All right, <clears throat> as y'all can tell, I was running <clears throat> just a little bit uh, behind this morning. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I wanted. Okay. All right. All right. Let's get going. Let's get going. Let's get going. All right. So, so listen to this, listen to this. So this thing has been on my heart. This thing has been, been, uh, been, been in me and I gotta, I gotta get this over to you. I gotta teach this thing to you. We gotta get this. We gotta get this. So go to Proverbs chapter number four, verse number seven to start <clears throat> Proverbs four and seven to start. I, I want to talk about, about transformation I want to talk about about changing your life, and I want I want us to understand a few things about how this process takes place um, and how we are to be a part of the process. Because it's not just a matter of of hearing a thing; it's a matter of applying to your life what you've heard. Good morning. I'm just telling, trying to tell y'all. Listen to this. It's not just a matter of hearing; it's a matter of applying. You can change your mind thirty thousand times a day. But what you can't change 30 times a day is your inside, your heart, who you are. And so the, the, the thing that people like to do is we, we love to change our mind because that's easy. Changing your heart is a little bit more difficult and it's a little bit more intense. And so the only thing, the only results you're going to get are based on what's on the inside of you. Those are the results that you're receiving. It's not, it's not, we, we, we think that everything, I mean, it starts in your mind because what you allow to get in your mind and to get into your heart is who you are. But to change what's in your heart, that means that that has to be, that's a deep change. That's an inward thing. So listen to this, listen to this, and let's get going. And it's going to all make sense. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding. And so I wanted to make this simple. I wanted to break it down for it. So I, 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 I broke it down like this right here. Wisdom is to know a thing. Understanding is to, to apply what you know. Wisdom is to know a thing. Understanding is to be able to apply what you know. And, and so it is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is you acting on the information that you know and it's applying it to your life. And those are the only results that you are going to get. Why, why is this important? Because we, we know a whole lot of stuff, but we, we don't apply the stuff that we know. And anything that you know, you can repeat. And anything that you can repeat, you can teach. So you only know what you only know. You only know, listen to this, listen to this. You only understand what you can apply. And what you can apply, you can repeat. And what you can repeat, you can teach to others. If you can't teach it, you don't know it. If you can't teach it, you don't know it. When, 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 this is, this is good, listen to this. When Adam knew Eve, they produce something like them. They were able to produce something like them. So whatever you know, you should be able to produce it. And you will produce what you know. 
So, so when Adam and when when Adam knew Eve, they produced a son. What what do you know in your life, and what are you actually producing in your life? What are you producing? Okay. So let's go here. Let's go here. Go here with me, cause I I can never get away from this scripture. Go to Luke chapter number twenty two. Luke chapter number twenty two. I want to hurry up, cause my time my time is short. My time is short, and I want to get to my big finish today. I want to get to my big finish. Are you in Luke chapter number 22, verse number 31? Luke 22, 30, verse number 31. I, I need you to listen today, and I need you to listen to this, and I need you to hear it. I need you to hear it. You in Luke chapter number 22, verse number 31. Uh, come on, get there. Get that Bible. Get there. Get there. Get there. And we're there. And we're there. And we're there. I need for y'all to listen to this part. I'm, I'm being slow and deliberate today. Be deliberate today because I want you to listen to this part. And I want you to get this part. And I want you to get this part down into your sanctified soul. Listen, th this word is about to be transformative. Your life is about to change. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Uh, but I pray for thee that thy faith fail thee not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brothers. I want to stop right there because when... When, 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 when God was talking to me about this this morning, he said, I want you to look at something. He said, I want you to look at the part. You know, I told y'all sifting means to be agitated from the inside. It isn't a stuff on it. It's whenever you're, you're, whenever you feel some type of way about something, it's because that thing is on the inside of you. So here's what the Lord said to me this morning about this. The Lord said, look at this. <clears throat> he said, do you know how easy it would have been or how easy it is for me to take you out of this sifting process? He said, but this sifting process is important because you can't think about this right here. When they sifted, when they, when they sifted the wheat, they wanted to get rid of the part of the wheat that was no good. So they sifted to get the chaff out of it. The, the wind would blow it away. It wasn't a part of the main product. So think about this. This is what God said to me. God said, you go through this sifting process so that I can get rid of the stuff out of you that's no good for you. So I won't take you out of the process. I let you stay in the process so that we can get out the bad stuff out of you so that we can only get to the part of you that we can use, the sifting process. Get to this, get this, get this, get this, get this, get this down to your soul. So what God does to us is God, God, God won't take us out of the process, but he gives us the strength, the might, and the ability the faith that we need in order to go through the process so that when we come out of the process, all that's left in us is the stuff that we need in order to make it in life. I, I got to sip my tea again. I got to sip my tea again. So God says, I'm not going to take you out of the process because the process is important to you. Because once you go through the process, whatever it is that you're going through, you, when you come out of it, you'll have everything that you need. Watch this. Y'all remember I told you just a minute ago about that repeatable, that teachable? He says now, when you go through the process and you are converted, when you learn, when you know, when you apply, you'll be able to go back and teach others so that they may learn, they may know, and they may apply. It is going to be repeatable. So when you go through the process, when you're strengthened, when, you're con when you are converted, you'll be able to help other people. Now, this process is important because if you don't go through the process, you won't be able to teach nobody. So that's important. He said, I'm not going to take you out. I'm not going to take you out, but I'm praying that your faith won't, won't fail you as you're going through it. Did y'all get that? I'm praying that your faith won't fail you as you're going through it. Okay. You, you, we're, we're almost there. We're almost there. Go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. I got to turn there myself. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. I'm building. I'm building. Build with me. Build with me as my Bible, as I can get this thing to flip. Amen. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse number 13. Build with me. Build with me today. If you'll build with me today, when we get through building, you're going to have a strong and a sure house. Because we're only building on the foundation that has already been laid. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. They have no temptation taken you, but such as is common, and common to man. But God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But with, with the temptation also, 
but with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So watch this. This is where people misquote the scripture that the Lord won't put no more on you than you can bear. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that he will make a way of escape for you so that when you're going through it, you'll, he'll, he'll make a way uh, that you can get out of what you're going through. He'll make you strong enough to make the right decision when you're going through what you're going through. But God didn't put this stuff on you. It is only you when you allow yourself to be taken away by it that you allow stuff to be added to you that shouldn't be there. Now watch this. Listen to this. The word has made no provisions for a child of God to struggle. Okay, let that sink in, sink in for a minute. The word has made no provision for a child of God to struggle. There's no provision in the word for you to struggle. Because the struggle, if you're struggling, that means that you are opposing God. I didn't say you weren't going to have challenges. I didn't say you weren't going to go through stuff. Because it clearly, if he's telling, if he told Simon that Satan desires to sift you, that you're going to go through some stuff. But he said, I pray for you that your faith fail you not. He never said that a child of God should struggle. Because if you're struggling, that means that you are opposing God. And if you're opposing God while you're going through what you're going through, who's going to help you? Listen to this. Y'all got to get this. You got to get this down in your soul. So watch this. If you, if, you are, if you are struggling, that means that you are opposing God. As a believer, I'm, ta I'm talking to believers. If you are struggling, that means that you are opposing God. And if you're opposing God, who is going to help you when you're going through what you're going through? Because certainly, according to the word, when, when Simon was being sifted, he said, I pray for you that your faith fail you not. He didn't say, Simon, I'm going to take you out of the sifting process. He said, I'm going to pray for you that your faith won't fail you. And if, you, and if you're being faithful while you're going through, listen to this. If you're being faithful while you're going through, that means you're going to get through whatever it is that you're going through. But if you're struggling through it, that means that you're opposing God's word and God's instructions. And if you're opposing the word and his instructions, who is going to help you while you're going through? That's why believers sometimes have the toughest of times when they're facing these challenges because they're refusing the instruction that is going to get them out of whatever it is that they're going through. And as long as you're refusing the instructions, you're going to struggle through it. I told him Wednesday, I said, I came, I came to a point in my life. It was almost like me trying to take a trip to Pensacola, but I'm, but I'm going through on my hands and knees because I'm refusing the instructions. And, and then one day I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And what God was saying was just get in this car. I'm sending the car. We're going to make this trip easier. Get in the car. You don't have to crawl on your hands and knees. And for so long, I was crawling on my hands and knees but I hadn't even made it out of my neighborhood yet. And everything was tough. It was a struggle. It was tight because I was refusing the instructions. And then when I got sick and tired of being sick and tired, I started listening to the, instru listening to the instructions and realized that I did not have to crawl on my hands and knees. Yes, I still had to go to Pensacola. Y'all better get this. I still had to go to Pensacola. But my journey was not supposed to be as difficult as I was making it. All I had to do was get in the car that God was sending by and listen to the instructions, get on the inside of the car, drive, because God was making it easier. What I was doing was making it more difficult because I thought that as a child of God, it was necessary for me to struggle through to get to my destination. It's not necessary for, the, for you to struggle through to get to your destination because your faith will get you to the place where you need to be. What you need to do is obey the instructions. You need to get wisdom and you need to get understanding. And my God, let me tell you right now, for all of you who think that you can get the wisdom and the understanding without following God's plan, God has set order in the earth realm. Boy, I'm about to get to this thing right now. God has set order in the earth realm. And if you refuse God's order, you will always struggle. What is God's order? I'm glad you asked me. Go to Isaiah chapter number 30. Go to Isaiah chapter number 30. Mm-hmm. Come on, I got to sip my tea on this. My God, that's good tea. You and Isaiah, come on, I got to get there. I'm telling you to go there, I got to get there. What's God's order? What's God's order? Yeah, I'm going to give it to you. Isaiah chapter number 30. Because a whole lot of folk are trying to receive it. Uh, we're trying to receive something that they don't want to follow the instructions. And you're only making your life more difficult. 
Oh, come on. Come on. I didn't mean to go here, but I'm going to go here. It's like uh, any of y'all ever been a child? Any of y'all ever have parents? And it's like your parents try and teach you stuff that they know because they've been through the thing that they're trying to teach you. See, they have been converted. Come on, I'm using the word. They have been converted. They've been sifted. They've been converted. And so what they try and do is teach you what they already know. But what happens is we like to refuse instructions because for some reason or another, I don't know why, we want to experience the hardship for ourselves. If, if, if you don't have to go through something, don't go through it. If you can learn a lesson and not see, if I'm crawling on my hands and knees and I'm telling you it's painful, but you need to go to Pensacola also, and I'm telling you get the, the best way for you to get there is to get in the car and to drive there, then, then why would you want to crawl on your hands and knees simply because, I, come on, come on, that don't even make sense. Let me get back to my scripture. Isaiah um, chapter, number, chapter number 30, I need verse number 20, I'm sorry, verse 20 and 21. Isaiah 30, verse 20 and 21. I'm about to help somebody. God gave you pastors, according to Jeremiah 3 and 15, God gave you pastors after his own heart, right? So your pastor is God's heart for you. Did y'all get that? Your pastor is God's heart for you. So all of your instructions are going to come through God's heart for you. Man, come on. All of your instructions are going to come through God's heart for you. You have to submit yourself and you have to honor the authority that God has set up for you because all of your instructions for the word of God, for, for God, oh, come on, get it right, get it right, slow down. All of the instructions for you are going to come through God's heart for you. So you got to honor God's heart that he's given to you. That would be your man or woman of God. If you dishonor them, you're going to miss the instructions. And if you miss the instructions, you're going to struggle through life. Come on, I'm, I'm blessing somebody right now. Three people just got blessed and 25 are going to get it tomorrow. Yes, yes. And so watch this. If God has given you pastors after your own heart to feed you with knowledge and understanding, knowledge to know, wisdom to know, understanding to apply. They, you know it and they teach you how to apply it to your life. And so watch this. Isaiah 30, verse number 20, verse 20 and 21. And though the Lord give you bread of adversity, and the water of affliction, yet shall not the teachers be removed into a corner anymore. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Are you seeing your teachers? Are you seeing them? Watch this. And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Watch this. So God is going to give you teachers and you're going to hear a voice that's going to tell you which way to go. For, so that you could be prosperous in life. Man, come on, come on, come on. I'm teaching somebody. Got to teach, got to drink my tea, got to drink my tea. So what we do is, like I said Wednesday, what we do is we like to read the words, but we don't want to listen to the voice. Oh my God. And the word of God is relevant to your life even right now. We like to read the words, but we don't want to hear the voice. We like to read the words because we want the head knowledge. But we don't want to hear the voice, which is which is the application, which is which which is that part where you get to that not only do you get to know it, but you get to know you get to apply it. We we like to hear the voice because we want the wisdom, we want the head knowledge. But we I mean we like to read the words because we want the head knowledge. But we don't want to listen to the voice, the wisdom, the understand I mean the the understanding, the application part of it, because God would not give you some words that He will not tell you how to apply. Come on, that's why Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you to give you, to teach you and, and to show you which way to go, to show you how to do this thing. That's why you have Holy Spirit on the inside of you. What we want to do is we like to read the words. We'll be like, yeah, I got it, I got it, I got the words. But no, you need to hear the voice. Here is a voice that tells you how to use the words that you just read. Come on, somebody, y'all need to get this. The voice will tell you, how to read, how to, how to apply the words that you just read. You need the voice. You need God speaking to you. You, you need that. You, you need that voice and, and you need, you need, you need, listen. And a lot of times, you know what will happen. You know what will happen. You know what will happen. Let me bless you right now. For you who listen, who honor your man and woman of God, and you listen to the words, you know what you say most of the time. My pastor said that. And you know why you say that? Because your pastor's voice is in your head and is in your heart. Come on, somebody. And every time that that thing comes up, 
You understand it because why? I was sitting there. I honored the instructions. I honored the word. And I hear them speaking to me. I hear that voice telling me this is the way to go. Did I just bless you? Come on, hit that like and love button if I just bless you. And if you're not submitted to a man or woman of God, you're trying to figure all this stuff out on your own. And that's not the way God set this thing up. That's not the way, that's not the order that God set up for you to live your life. That's not the way that God wanted you to live your life. And that's not the way God wants you to live. That's why it's important that you go to your local house of worship and that you submit yourself to your man or woman of God so that they can feed you with knowledge and understanding and they can give you God's heart for you because they are God's heart for you so that they can give you the word of God so that you won't have to be out here struggling through life. That's why God gave you them because God wanted you to get this thing down into your sanctified soul. You cannot do this on your own. A believer was not meant to live this life on their own. They were meant to live this life in submission to, to their man and woman of God who is in submission to God himself. So God feeds them and they feed you. And when they feed you, you will understand that life will become a whole lot more simple for you when you submit yourself to the instructions that God have you, has for you. You do not have to struggle through life. All you got to do is follow the instructions. I'm telling you right now, you are going to face challenges. You're going to face things that are, you're going to face some adversity. You're going to face these things. Let me break it down to you in football terms. There are some high school kids that are getting ready to play a football game tonight. The team on the other side is their adversary. They're going to face some adversity, but watch this. A good coach has already prepared his team for what they're going to face. Come on, somebody. Somebody get this thing down in your soul. A good team has already prepared the team for what they're going to, effect, going to face. What they did was the team, the coach came up with a game plan for the opponent that they're going to face. Even before they faced them, they came up with a game plan because they got film, they got tape. They know what the opponent is going to do. And there's nothing, there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new that Satan is using right now that he has not used before. And the Lord is already 20 steps ahead of any move that he could ever make. Because your God knows the beginning from the end. He already told you that your latter end will greatly increase. Why can he make that statement? Because he's already seen your end. He knows that if you follow the instructions, that you are going to, your life is going to get so much better tomorrow than it is today. But if you make bad decisions in today, you are affecting your tomorrow. The better decisions you make today, the more prosperous your tomorrow will become. And so what does the coach do? The coach has a game plan. They go, the team goes out and they practice. He puts in the game plan. He tells them that this is what we're going to do. When they do this, we're going to do that. And we already know what they're going to do. Simply when we line up a certain way, when we come a certain way, we already know how they're going to respond, how they're going to react. And what does the team do? The team gets out there. And if the team has practiced well, and if the team has learned the lessons, when they get out there, nothing surprises them. They know that they're facing adversity. The other team is trying to stop you from getting to the end zone. We are already know we're facing this adversity, but we're going to get to the end zone. Why? Because we're going to win. A child of God, you always win. God says that we are always triumphant. You always win in every situation. You need to get this down in your soul. You always win. You always win. You always win. You always win. According to Hebrews chapter number four, verse number 12, the word of God is quick and powerful. That means that it is alive. When you read the words, allow the words to speak to you and you will always be, be victorious. No, we are not slaughtering animals on the altar anymore. But now we got other things that we offer up. Oh my God, you can offer up your praise as a sacrifice. You watch this and I like this part. Offer up your life as the ultimate sacrifice. Give your life to Jesus. It is not just about what you can, what you know in your mind. It is about what you do from your heart. Come on, you got to allow the word to transform you. You need to be changed. You need to be transformed. You don't just need to get some head knowledge. You need heart knowledge. You need, you need to get some wisdom from God and you need to let God show you how to apply this wisdom that you have. Allow the word of God to speak to you. Don't just read it so you can be more educated than your neighbor. Read it 
so that you may be able to have your life transformed so that you may give these same words to your neighbor so that their life could be transformed so that we all get better. Allow the word of God to speak to you today so that your life may be transformed. I don't just want head knowledge. I want stuff that I know how to apply, to use, and to get word results. Because if God said it, God, God told us that he is not a man that he should lie. If God said it, he said, if I said it, I'll perform it. I'll do it. So think about this. Everything that God says to you, God has already performed it. He's already performed it. Will you receive the word of God? Come on. You got, listen, I'm telling you, you got to honor God's system. God has a system in place. I know you may think, but why are you trying to work this out on your own? I'm, I'm telling somebody right now, get up off your hands and knees, baby. You can walk. You can walk. You can walk. You can walk right over into the blessings of God. Get off your hands and knees. You can walk. God has set this thing up for you so that you will not have to struggle through life. You don't have to struggle through life. You don't have to do it. Submit yourself to your local, to a local church. Submit yourself. Submit yourself. Honor what God has placed in your life. Honor it. Honor what God, this, listen, and, and I, I, I know I must, must be on this because this is Pastoral Appreciation Month. Honor what God has said in your life. Honor the men and women that God has said in your life. Honor them. Honor them. And when you honor them, you can receive from them. Anything you honor, you're going to receive from it. You can receive from them. You're going to get knowledge. You're going to get wisdom. You're going to get, you're going to get understanding. You're going to learn how to apply this. And your life is about to get so much better. So much better. Don't, don't allow. Don't, don't, listen, that sifting process is necessary. That sifting process. Y'all remember when, I, I got to say, grandma and them, maybe some of the mamas still do it. They, and, and like I told you, I've, I said this to y'all before. We went to the store looking for one of them old-timey hand crank sifters. We went li looking for one of those one day, and, and we, were, we were in Walmart, and we, they didn't have one. They got these new modern kind of sifters. But, but, but grandma and them used to use that hand crank kind of sifter that had those little, little, those little blades that turned in there that sifted the flour because you wanted to get the lumps out because, can't, you know, you can't use the lumps in your cake because the lumps will make up your cake. I mean, mess up your cake because the lumps, if, if you, got, you got lumps in there, them lumps don't bake. Come on, I'm blessing somebody right now. The lumps don't bake. So, so when you're going through the sifting process and God says that I'm praying that your faith fail you, fail you not, I'm sorry, that your faith fail you not, this is what God is saying. I know you already have what's in you to get through what you're going through. I, I'm trying to get this stuff out of you that you don't need so that when you go through this thing, you'll be useful for the kingdom. You'll be useful for the kingdom. Don't get out of the process. Don't take yourself out of the process. Go through the process. Listen to God as you're going through the process because what you need to make it through the process is already in you. It's already in you. It is already in you. I'm telling y'all right now, man, victory is yours. You are already victorious. Listen. Don't just read the words. Let them speak to you. Let them speak to you. The word of God is quick, is powerful, and God is always relevant. God is always relevant. He's not going to tell you to go and get, go and get, uh, uh, go and slaughter something on the altar anymore. But, but, but he may, he may, he may use that, that same principle that he, that he's teaching in that word. And he'll bring it to you in a relevant way that is apropos for you in these times and show you how to use that scripture in these times to get the same results that they got. Come on. If Abraham was blessed the way he was blessed, God wants you blessed the same way. He wants you, are you not the seed of Abraham? Come on, come on. Or he wants to bless you the same way that he was able to bless Abraham. My time is up. I'm telling y'all right now, that voice, when it speaks to you, start listening to you. Start listening to it. How am I going to know the voice? Listen to this. This is easy. This, this is so easy. If your first mind is always right, I want you to start listening to your first mind. If your first mind is always right, why don't you start listening to your first mind? Because if your first mind is always right, wouldn't that give, be a clue to you that your first mind is the voice of God speaking to you and you need to start obeying your first mind? If your first mind is always right, obey your first mind. And the Lord even goes so far as to tell us this, my sheep hear my voice. My children, they know my voice 
and they ain't listening to no other voice. So I'm telling you today, as you walk through the day, be sensitive to the voice of God. 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 Man, if God don't change your life and do some amazing things, and I'm not just telling y'all this because, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not pumping a fantasy. I'm not doing any of that thing. I'm telling y'all, when you listen to the voice of God and follow his instructions, man, you, you're about to live a life that you never even imagined, imagined that you can live but simply because you obey the voice of God. So make it a point today. Make it a point today to listen to the voice of God. Make it a point to be in your local, your local house of worship this weekend. Man, go to church this weekend. Now, I'm telling y'all, there is a word for you that your man or woman of God has prepared, especially for you because God, they're giving you God's heart and God knows your heart and God wants you to get better. They, they are prepared. They, 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 there's a word that they are prepared for you when you go to worship this weekend. Man, when you go, you're going to receive a word that is going to be life changing. They are prepared a life changing word for you. So go to worship this weekend. Be, whatever time they start, make sure you're there 15 minutes early. And, and go on and get yourself prepared. Get your mind right. Come in, concentrate on, you know, come in with some expectations. Put some expectations on your man or woman of God. They're going to preach better. God bless you. Y'all have a great Friday. Listen to the voice of God today. Listen to the voice of God today. Listen to the voice of God today. God bless you.